Hi everybody, this is Alexis from Recruiting Daily. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're just going to give it a few more minutes before we jump into things. Um, we'll let the stragglers roll in and everybody can get comfy in their chairs. Um, thanks for joining us today. You can take a look here at this beautiful home screen. We'll be with you shortly. We're going to have a really great time. And uh, if Tin Cup gets lucky, I might do a little singing. We'll see. <laughs> Hold tight. Okay. All right. I think that was plenty of time for everybody to get situated. Welcome. My name is Alexis Gingerella from Recruiting Daily. Thanks for joining us today uh, while we talk about the death of email. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, you can see our lovely home screen here. Um, we're going to join some people with CDW. You're going to hear uh, some awesome things from William Tincup. And Thanks to our sponsor, Text Recruit. Take a look right here. Find them at textrecruit.com, at textrecruit on Twitter. Uh, speaking of Twitter, don't forget to follow along with us, hashtag our daily. Uh, quick reminder here, hashtag our daily, housekeeping. We cannot hear you. You can hear me right now. I know. I sound awesome. I practiced all morning. We cannot hear you. However, you can see that there's some options on your little panel right there to ask questions. Do that. I will be paying attention, I promise. I'll shout those out as I see them come in and the guys will answer. If they don't get to them today, I promise we'll follow up and get everything to them. So don't worry. You're not going to be forgotten. Uh, 24 hours, you'll get the recording. So again, if you do have to step away or miss anything, we got your back. Don't worry. Awesome. Like I said before today, our buddy Jared... Yeah. He's from CDW. He's going to do some talking with my other buddy, Tin Cup. What's up? Uh, they're going to answer some questions and go over the death of email. And like I said, I would do a little singing. So without further ado, greatness from Jared, CDW. Here we go. <laughs> So this is William, so you get used to my voice. Um, and of course, I was joking with Lex when I asked her to sing. <laughs> but now that she's done it, I think we have to do this every webinar. Uh, Y'all, I'm, I'm really excited to, today to be with you, uh, to talk with Jared uh, about text recruiting. We were brainstorming what we wanted this webinar, kind of what the vision was, what we wanted to kind of get across. Is, uh, you know, here's a guy uh, who, who literally has done it. And not not theory, not academia, not not put plans out, and and not really have uh, have done it. This is a guy that's actually educated uh, and executed uh, on a strategy on text recruiting. And so, you know, we have this this moment while we have him on the phone where we can pull as much knowledge out of Jared as humanly possible. So the the juice in doing a webinar like this is we've got you know a bunch of people listening in. That are that are experts that are interesting uh, and that want to learn more about the subject and might also know some things about the subject and we've got an expert in Jared who's done this um, so the juice is let's let's try and as best we can learn what he's done kind of get into kind of maybe even some of the stats and kind of get get into some of the process understand some of the things he overcame um, so that we can pull back those things in our own companies. Uh, those learns, if you will, that he's learned with CDW. So I'm excited because my role today is to ask Jared a bunch of questions and to pull out the interesting things, but, uh, but I need your help, uh, quite frankly. Uh, I need you all, as you're listening, if you have anything that you're like, oh, wait a minute, Will, I want to know more about you know, the opt-out rate. Uh, I want to know more about you know, whatever that is. Please, different from even a normal webinar, please ask questions. Um, and because it'll just make it that much better. And when Lex sees a question that she likes, we're not gonna, well, you know, we're not gonna wait until the end. We have plenty of those types of questions that I think we'll we'll land on. If something's really really compelling in the interim, we're gonna throw it in. 
and we're going to really just try because the goal Jared signed up for this he wants to use this hour as a, as a way of getting the knowledge that's in his head out to as many people as possible so without any further ado Jared how are you doing this afternoon great uh, excited to be here today all righty okay let's start let's uh, let's start at the beginning and uh, let's go all the way back to you know what led you to make the decision to add text recruiting to your arsenal yeah, so I actually used Text Recruit prior to my time here in CW, joined in July 2015. Um, you know, texting is something that we saw candidates using every day. Um, our workforce was using it. It was a natural way for us to communicate with candidates faster. Um, you know, in the game of recruiting, getting to the candidate the first time, being that first recruiter to call them is sometimes the most important. Um, you know, being able to efficiently communicate through with them throughout the entire recruiting life cycle from start to finish is, uh, you know, is, is what it's about for us. Um, you know, so come CDW to the early 2016, um, you know, we kind of took what I, what I learned from my previous employer and brought that into CDW and we're able to install it by giving recruiters the option to use it. Um, and also giving our candidates the option to choose how they want to be, how they want to be communicated with. So it's not that we are purely going to communicate with our candidates via text messaging, but we're offering it as a unique, uh, a unique method to communicate with them. So we can communicate via phone, we can communicate via text, we can communicate via email. Um, it's all about giving your candidates the option for us. The option for us. And so I typically look at candidates and I say that's an audience, and the audience kind of you know has factors, it has uh, it has demands and wants and needs and all that type of stuff. And so your candidates. Your audience, you know, do you perceive that you know, with CDW? Do you, do you perceive that you're ahead of the game and using text uh, text recruiting, or do you believe that you're kind of right on pace with what they need from you, the candidates need from you, or do you find that you're, or do you feel like you're a little bit behind in what they what they want from you at CDW? You know, I think we're definitely ahead of the game. I think that, but you know, it, it's interesting to me. There's always opportunity for you for people to improve, and CW um, certainly has opportunities for us. But I think that texting enables us to communicate, um, you know, for, with the candidate perspective, definitely ahead of it. Good, good. I, you know what? I've got to stop because uh, Chris asked a really good, a really good question about the stats that are up on the uh, slide. He's asking, you know, where where'd you get those figures? So, Jared, tell us a little bit about what we see on the screen. Yeah, you know, um, there's 6.1 billion people texting worldwide, which I think is a, a tremendous number. When you think about it, um, there's more than 5 billion, almost almost nearly 5 billion cell phone users today, and by 2020. That's going to grow to 6.1 um, billion users, you know, overtaking home phones. And really, what you're seeing is is the the end of people having a landline. Um, you know, how often anymore are you, as a recruiter, uh, getting a you're calling the the Bazell residence and you know leave a message and we'll get back to you. Um, the opportunity for you as a recruiter to really get in front of people immediately is tremendous. There's over two uh, there's there's texting over 200 countries. Um, and text recruit will enable that for you all. Um, you know, it takes an average of 52 days to fill an open position. And I think what's, what's tremendous about that is, is that that continues to go up for us um, as an industry, up from 48 in 2011. And then, uh, you know, the cost of an unfilled position, you know, even if it's potentially days, um, days extra in your recruiting process can add up significantly. And um, last year alone, it was $13 billion per month in the U.S. Wow. Well, thank. First of all, thanks, Chris, for asking the questions because we would have gotten to it. But uh, but I love that you asked the question about where those stats come from. Uh, Jared, let let me go backwards to when you first started this at CDW. Uh, and I don't even want to insinuate that there were challenges, but you know you're throwing at something new, and with new there's change, and change can be difficult for folks. Uh, you know, what were some of the challenges that you might have had internally or even externally when you that you faced when you kind of first started? to launch text recruiting? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, it was eye-opening. Our recruiters were already texting people, right? Um, we just didn't have the processes in place to be able to track it, be able to record it, be able to monitor it, have it truly integrated with our ATF system and, and our technology stack here at CEW. And I think that's the thing, is it allowed us to standardize the process, standardize the delivery that it was going to occur, and, and, and make it uniform across the, across the team. Um, so, you know, when I go back and, and look at, um, you know, how did we, 
um, how did we make it happen? Um, we did it by going out there and really kind of, uh, you know, giving our recruiters the ability to offer this as a, as a way, as, as a strategy. And so they're already using it. Like you said, they're already they're already doing it themselves, and the candidates probably because of that, the candidates already want text recruiting. Um, so let's let's kind of get into that. Is it what's uh, what's needed? What's needed when you when you already recognize it, like you did? Uh, what's needed at that point from your recruiters? What do you need to do to say, um, okay, I recognize everyone's you know, text recruiting. Uh, here's what we need to do as a company. So take us into that, that moment where you realize that your folks are already texting and you realize the candidates, your audience have, have changed. What do you have to do? What, is, what are the people in the, that are listening, what do they need to do at that particular moment? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously um, for us, we kind of took text recruiting in a phased approach here at CEW. We really gave the tool first to our recruiters, and then second, we went back and enabled the integration so we could kind of automate the process. But we wanted our conversations with candidates via text messaging to be authentic, um, be original, and not be perceived as, you know, you're talking to a machine or you're talking to a robot, because that authenticity is so essential, uh, you know, in, in the candidate engagement process. Um, you know, and I think for us, um, you know, that's, that's really what kind of drove it for us. That's how we kind of drove adoption. We didn't go in and say, hey, we're going to force it on all of you to use this product. We're going to get adoption slowly by building essentially, you know, a kind of, you know, pay setters or leaders within the organization who will be able to go out there and talk about their use of it specifically, how, what's, it, what's it done for their candidate engagement process, how quickly they're seeing responses from candidates, and really let that kind of spread like fire throughout the organization. You know, uh, I think my previous success with Text Recruit, my prior employer, uh, really allowed me to kind of, uh, you know, have that belief, have that faith in the product, um, you know, which I, I think eliminated some of the doubts with kind of going with that style of, of rollout for the product. Right. Well, first of all, it's a great rollout because if it's their idea and they use it, you don't force it. Uh, then, <laughs> then, then because it's not your idea, quote unquote, your idea, and you're not forcing it. They they take more even more ownership. You know, Mike Mike Bush asks a really well timed question here. Was the rollout uh, a phased approach, and how long did it take to establish fully deployed and integrated resource uh, for the talent acquisition team? Yeah, so it was a phased approach for us, and that was mostly because we wanted to integrate it into our, our ATS and our CRM system here at CDW, and based upon steps and statuses, automatically trigger communications within um, that get sent out and get passed over to text recruit from Taleo, our applicant tracking system. Um, and, and so that took about 90 days uh, to approximately to get up and running because our team had to go through, build those communications, those templates, and work with the, te work with the text recruit and our internal HRIS team to really kind of set up those integrations and successfully test it before we rolled out the full uh, the full scale auto communication. Um, however, we were up within you know a couple of days after being trained on using Text Recruit, where our recruiters could interface back and forth with candidates. Um, you know the core product of Text Recruit. So it's fast there. The slower part was to get it integrated and to get all your kind of your templates and get everything kind of baked in. Yeah. Um, and that more that has more to do with the with the you know the people that we have to work with in CDW. I mean, we uh, want to put things through an extensive vetting process. Make sure that if we're going to template something, it's going to work right. It's built for the future, and it's not built for just what's right in front of us right now. So um, you, we are very very thorough about thinking uh, about how it will be used, what is the best way to use it, um, and how does it truly how does it fit as a piece of our entire recruiting lifecycle. Right, um, Adam uh, Glassman asked a great question as well. Did you did you ask for any kind of opt-in approval, a la email, or is it understood that they provide a cell number? Yeah, so um, you know, on our application in our CRM as well, it's everything's about about getting um, you know their cell phone number for us. There's automatic opt-in language that's on all of our terms and conditions for us. Um, and then also, I, you know, I mean, we are texting for, uh, you know, in response to them, uh, them uh, reaching out to us, CDW, um, for an employment opportunity, which, it, you know, um, that's, that's the specific reason why we're reaching out to them as well. Right. But, yeah, I'll, I'll, go ahead. No, it's okay. Dana Brandt uh, also asked a really good question along the lines, if, if using a, a personal phone, does the candidate 
then have your personal number and can contact you at all hours. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes, that can happen too with using a personal phone or using a company provided cell phone. Um, you know, for us, the Text Recruit app enables recruiters on their phone to be logged in and out, you know, as they see fit. So if they don't want to receive candidate communications at one o'clock in the night, they can they can essentially log out of that application. They're no longer going to get push notifications. I think Text Recruit has the ability to not only provide push notifications to your computer, so when you're in the office and use their web interface, but they also have the ability to, via a mobile app, to really kind of respond back and forth with that candidate, and they have no idea where you're texting them from. Whether it's online, you're in the office, or whether you're in, you know, uh, you're out sitting outside working from um, the coffee shop. Right, right. Oh, that's this is great. So, first of all, thanks to the audience. Thank you all so much for asking questions, uh, because that's as I said at the very beginning. This is the juice. I'm now I'm having a hard time keeping up with the questions, which is great. Uh, but I do want to kind of get to uh, a question that Chris uh, Silbre has, and and because you've looked at this, you've 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 worked with Text Recruit before. You're working with them now at CDW. In your mind, what what differentiates Text Recruit from other texting software in the market? Just just from a layman's perspective, they'll they can tell us another answer. But what do you what do you feel separates them? Yeah, so I think it's 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 honestly it's the ability to fit in the entire you know the entire technology recruiting process from all the way pre-application to day one hire, right? And how are we engaging people with automated and manual communication? So one thing that the CW team has built out more than 50 templates within Text Recruit that go out automatically based upon steps and status triggers uh, within, to, within Taleo and within our CRM. And I think that, you know, that, that ability for us, uh, you know, is substantial. In Q1 alone, the recruiting team here at CW saved uh, approximately 100 hours of recruiter productivity. Uh, that is time that our recruiters were able to reinvest back into, uh, you know, talking with candidates, working, sourcing candidates, and, and I think that's been that's one of the huge things. So their intimate knowledge and ability to integrate, um, you know, with with technology with HR technology solutions is significant. Uh, the other thing is a lot, there's a lot of text messaging providers who might be able to integrate from a one-way perspective, i.e., you can send a blast to the candidate, but having that ability to have that conversation back and forth is the thing that separates text recruit back, you know, in reality, right? Um, because you will not believe how many people we get responding. Just today, our team sent out a campaign to 150 targeted uh, you know, people in, in, a, in a market for us that were looking for sales positions. They had reached out to us, they had joined our talent network, um, but in some way in the process they had fell out. Um, you know, since sending out that message here at 1130, we've had already 50% of the population respond, and that number continues to increase, um, you know, so I, I, it, that number continues to increase by the minute, um, you know, our team gets responses, and I think the fact that you can continue to see those people chime in, hey, I'm interested in there, hey, I want to call you, uh, hey, I want to call you, when's a good time? Um, I think that's really what shows the use case for Text Recruit. Right. Okay. So, uh, wonderful questions are already kind of coming in. Jackie Clayton and Mike Bush asked uh, questions that are around automation and templates. So, let me go ahead and give you Mike's uh, question. How much is automated and how many messages were templates versus personal? And uh, what I think is a, a great part of this question is, did you incorporate your legal team for the review of verbiage? So, you know, a couple things there. I think, you know, as I shared earlier, we have more than 50 templates built out based upon steps and status triggers. Uh, you know, and I think that it's, it's pretty, uh, it, how did we kind of do that? Well, it was based upon where we were communicating already with candidates via email. So let's think about, um, interview stage. So automatically at CDW, 24 hours before an interview occurs, um, you're going to get a reminder saying, hey, your interview is at this location at this time tomorrow. Text back to confirm or let us know that you need to reschedule. Also within that message is a, you know, a map, uh, driving directions where we pulled their address and we're able to send them directly to, you know, driving directions to where they got to go tomorrow. Um, and, and, and I think it's all about providing that easy to use experience where we can minimate or we, where we can reduce, um, you know, reasons why people don't show up or they show up late, right? 
I got lost along the way. It's, uh, it's all about providing candidates with additional information. They were already going to use their cell phone for driving directions, so we just made it easier for them by putting it all in one spot. Uh, and, and I think, you know, we continue to use it to, throughout the recruiting process to share videos about, you know, what it's like to be, uh, you know, at, the C at CDW, what it's like to be a seller at CDW, what it's like, uh, what can you expect on your day one. So all the way through from start to finish, we're using that template. And did we have, um, you know, rec did we have recruiters review it? We actually had, a, we have a communications team at CDW, which is a group of recruiters that all get together and, and really kind of work with, um, work with how we're communicating with our candidates from a templated perspective. Um, you know, if you look at all the, uh, of all the templates, all the pieces of communications that the team's built out over the year, and um, by no means did it happen overnight, right? So I, I don't want to discourage anybody and say, oh, you got to have 50 built out on day one, you got to have 200 emails built out. It's really, um, how can you make it into manageable pieces that you can continue to scale over time? Um, and, that, and that's how we did it. And, you know, I think, you know, based upon your company's culture, based upon your company, um, you know, what they say about, you know, do you want every recruiting email to be sent out um, for legal review or not, that's a, that's a company decision. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that's up to your own respective individual legal teams. Right. Right. How fast, if, if, the, if your recruiters, you know, some of your recruiters were obviously already using text, but some of them weren't, how long does it take them to kind of take to it, you know, the, the duck to water kind of thing? You've given them something new. The audience obviously uh, uh, already appreciates it possibly. How long does it take the recruiters that maybe weren't on the fur, farther end of the adoption cycle, how long does it take uh -huh. for them to kind of get it? So, you know, I guess I would put the question back at you and, and say, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me that 6.1 billion people are texting worldwide. Uh, you know, and, and when you look at how many people there are here in the United States, how many people there are worldwide, uh, that is a tremendous amount. So chances are your recruiters are probably texting at some sort. You know, when I, you know, when I look at my family, for instance, my grandparents are texting. And I think times have changed over the last really, you know, five years to where texting has gained mass adoption. Across the, across the world, and, and recruiting has fallen behind here uh, because we aren't doing it as much as some other industries. And so, you know, it, it is, is the concern more around, oh, they don't want to text, they don't know how to text, or is it they don't know how to talk to a person? I think, you know, um, I think the templates for us uh, allow our recruiters to have some idea. Those templates are personalized. You know, they do all say, you know, person's name in it. They, they're signed by the respective recruiter um, to that standpoint. And, you know, I think it's really more for us about, um, you know, how do we make it easier for our teams to learn um, and, and really make it feel authentic, right? For us, authenticity is everything, as I mentioned earlier. Right. Right. Um, Vicki Vanderboom asked a really good question. So it's, it's really tactical because it's, a, you know, do folks opt in to the text and how do you, how do you essentially, how do you get folks who were previously in your database, maybe ATS or otherwise, uh, to agree or can you just start sending them text? So this is this is probably the problem that everybody on the on the call has is they've got data. Yeah. <laughs> they might even want to start this, but yeah. they're probably scared to start with just texting people, etc. So how did you start? Yeah. So everybody that we text has opted in um, to join our talent network, opted in to to receive emails or communications from CDW as a whole, whether it's via text messaging, whether it's via email. So. I think we were uh, definitely ahead of that curve when we developed and implemented our account network strategy with Smashfly um, several years ago, and we kind of said, hey, we want to make sure that we are encompassing all different parts of communication, whether we're you doing it today or in the future. Um, you know, so I think you've got to start sometime. So, you know, even if you, if you think about it now and you start to text, if you start to integrate that into your process now, um, you know, where are you going to be at a year from now? I think... You know, our team uh, adds, you know, uh, thousands of people a month into our talent network. And, you know, it, it, and we continue to grow, right? Those are where we are. Uh, that's where we're building our future talent pool here at CDW from. Right. So um, another question 
that I think is really good is how are templates managed? Uh, this is from Ryan Davenport uh, at the at the department level, position level, etc. So now you've got you've got fifty templates. How did you any? How did you build those? <laughs> yeah. B, how do you maintain those? Uh, yeah. And who's, who's responsible for you know the template building? And uh, yeah, so for us, they're managed at the departmental level um, internally here at CDW. If we were to manage it across the entire organization on the individual position level, that would be uh, you know hundreds, hundreds of, of text messaging templates and different ones for each position, unbearable. Um, you know, I think with Text Recruit, the nice thing about it is you can use tokens. Um, so, you know, if you want to mention the specific position or if you want to customize it, um, you know, we're, we're passing over that information from Taleo and, you know, um, I, I guess I would put it back to you, how many different templates do you have within your ATF today at your organization? And, you know, I would say there's by no means you would probably need um, more than that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and back, you know, one thing I wanted to add here is, is uh, you know, when it comes to total opt-outs for CDW, um, we're at less than half of a percent um, for total opt-outs, you know, since CDW started texting people in 2016. Um, so I think that is, uh, that is tremendous, right? When you look at opt-outs for email, when you looked at, at, at opt-outs for other rates, it's much higher. Um, and, and I think that that is something um, that's, a, that's a huge um, advantage for CDW when it comes to that. And also another thing to highlight is, is that the email view rate, so you get a text message, uh, chances are 99% that you are going to click that, you're going to open it, right, and you're going to read it. Um, you know, it immediately screen props to your phone, it's there, it's put, it push notifies. Um, you know, the email view rate is, is just over 20%. So, you know, you've got a huge difference there, 20% view rate with email, and then you've got 99% with text messaging. <laughs> it's not even a fair fight. <laughs> oh. So, Daniela McDonald asked a question, do hiring managers text or just recruiters? At CW, it's just recruiters. Just recruiters. Okay, do you ever see that uh, changing, or is that purposeful for you? Uh, so and I should actually clarify that it's the recruiting team. Um, so our coordinators uh, use use text messaging. So um, you know, and could hiring managers um, you know use it someday, potentially. But I guess I would ask you know, our hiring managers aren't communicating with our candidates um, directly via email, and with the exception of you know, let's say a candidate sends an e a thank you email to a hiring manager for the most part. Um, and, and that's just a that's just a philosophy of you know kind of how our recruiters operate it here at CEW. Nice. Uh, Ryan Davenport asks, can you send out an automated tests based on how the candidate responds? So uh, I guess is the question the candidate responds in and says, hey, you know, when's a good time to meet? And then you know, text right. messaging back right. it's kind of like AI technology right. yeah we're not doing that today um, we are we are working right now on potentially looking at how that could be fit into our roadmap um, we've got a lot of ideas of potential use cases for that things like um, you know how to drive referrals how to drive a, a, an application process um, and, and how can we continue to integrate texting into our everyday lives here at CDW um, you know it, it's definitely features that text recruit offers it just again you got to take things sometimes in, in manageable pieces and make sure that you do it right and you do it well. Um, and that's been really a key thing that the CW team has thought about throughout our entire time. Right. So I know you wanted to kind of use this as a platform to teach folks, uh, especially at different points, uh, uh, wherever they are in the process. So what advice would you give practitioners starting down this path? So people listening to the call uh, or potentially will listen to the call, what advice do you kind of start off with? Yeah, you know, uh, my uh, recommendation to everybody is, is don't try to don't try to overdo it. Don't try to over engineer your process until you know how it's going to fit in, really. And so here at CW, we you know we started off with really a kind of a, a smaller group, and then we rolled it out after adoption got up with that smaller group. We let them kind of use it. We let them uh, be the pace setters, and then we continue to let it spread. And, and, you know, we didn't want to go in and say, hey, we're going to buy a license for every member of the team until we knew that adoption was there, right, with that smaller group, and it would continue to kind of do it. So um, I would definitely recommend you kind of finding your people who are going to be the pace setters in your organization for texting, who are going to be the early adopters, who's going to really drive, the, drive it from that standpoint, and then continue to let it spread. 
what are what are some of the key texting recruiting metrics that you you know pay attention and why? Yeah, you know, for us, it's not necessarily about the number of text messages per day, um, you know, or the number of uh, you know the number the response rate because not all of our um, our text messages are meant to drive a response. It's more, you know, we use text messaging for informational purposes sometimes. Um, let's just say, hey, watch this video, or I'm going to text you. Um, you know, one of the use cases right now that we're working on for recruiting is at career fairs, at university events. Rather than giving somebody a piece of paper, we're going to have them walk away um, with, with digital collateral. And, and text them immediately after that, you know, they're standing right in front of us. Hey, you just received a text message on your phone with a virtual brochure or a link to a website where you can go and find more information about that job. Um, you know, the student, the student or the candidate, wherever you're at, already has, text, already has their phone in front of them. Why not use it? Um, and so I think that for, for us, those things, um, that's not important. I think what is the important metric for us is the number of people using it. Does it continue to go up? How many, what, what does our response time look, at, look like? What does our opt-out rate look like? Are we lower or above the tax recruit average, or above the tax recruit average? And I think that goes to show, are we communicating with, communicating with candidates what they want to see and what they're looking for from CDW? Right. Hey, let's go backwards just because uh, there's been a number of questions about CDW uh, that uh, we should probably answer. The size of, uh, you know, the CDW, how many uh, open positions do you fill in a year? What's the recruiting kind of the team look like, et cetera? If you do, you know, don't give away any secrets or anything, but just kind of give us a, a broad overview of, of CDW real quick. Yeah, you know, um, CW, you know, fills, uh, fills a lot of positions across the organization, ranging from, you know, entry-level sales positions, anywhere from, you know, four to, uh, to 600 individuals a year, all the way to, you know, your one-off corporate IT, um, you know, individuals to your, your, your engineers, um, you know, across the organization. And, I, you know, I think uh, there's such a wide variety of roles that our team fills, and, and, you know, we leave no stone unturned when it comes to kind of, um, you know, being unique and, and sourcing and identifying candidates. Um, you know, the question is, how big is the recruiting team? Uh, it's a mix of, you know, uh, of course, uh, coworkers and contractors. And, you know, all, all together, it's approximately 50 people here at CEW um, plus some contractors. Fantastic. Da you know, Daniela McDonald asked a question about where does this work? So what kind of jobs or uh, level candidates do you find most successful with texting? So where do you, now that you've got some data, where does it work for you the best? So I, I will tell you, um, we had a conception, we had an idea that this would be most effective in our entry level, you know, our, our recent graduates um, and our intern population here at CUW. And I think we have quickly learned that it does not matter the level of position anymore. Um, and I think it has to do with the mass adoption that texting has seen throughout uh, across generations, right? And, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, my grandparents are texting, and I never thought that would have happened five years ago. Um, they, they barely knew how to use a, a smartphone. Um, and, and I just think that it's, it's changed everything, right? The smartphone has overtaken, um, overtaken so much and, 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 and changed our lives. Um, I think it's crazy to think, um, you know, what you can all pack into that. Um, from, from a user standpoint there. Okay, so I, I need to get into some process questions. So what, when, you know, again, what changes did you need to make to your overall kind of recruiting in your philosophy or process? What had to change when you first got into that? And what are you still kind of modifying and changing as you go along with this? Yeah, I think for us, because of how we rolled it out to the team, letting them kind of make the choice to adopt it in the beginning, um, it was it was an easy process, right? Um, there wasn't a lot of, of changes needed other than allowing our candidates to pick how they best wanted to communicate with CUW, whether it's via text messaging, whether it's via phone, whether it's via email. I, you know, for us, um, you know, the ability to text somebody immediately and, and get that response within minutes uh, and set up a time to call them versus just calling them, leaving a voicemail, sending them an email saying, hey, I'm trying to get in touch with you. Um, that that's really what that's really what drove the change, right? Hearing those types of statistics, seeing our recruiters and and experiencing it, 
um, is really what gave us, you know, kind of the, the change needed. It wasn't any processes, I would say, from that standpoint that needed to change. Hmm. How do you how do you manage? Okay, so in this kind of philosophy, how do you manage standards across text uh, across text recruiting in general? Uh, first of all, do you? <laughs> Secondly, how do you or or is it important to manage standards, or is it is it important to let people be their true and authentic selves them, themselves? So the question at its core is, how do you do you? And then if you do, how do you manage standards? So you know, uh, you know, we're all professional recruiters here at CW, and, and I think that you know we instill a lot of power and autonomy into our recruiters here. Um, we don't, you know, um, we we let our recruiters email candidates via you know Outlook or Exchange, and um, you know our recruiters exercise and practice uh, you know best professional communication every day uh, in everything they do, and I think we have full confidence in, and instill that belief into the team. Um, so I, I don't think that there's a reason to, you know, kind of monitor it. But what I will tell you is, is that, um, you know, templates continue to, um, you know, ensure that you are um, from that standpoint. So Mike, and Bush, the, keep the process yeah. consistent. Yeah, and, and actually to kind of get at that, Mike Bush asked the question around kind of at NPS, Net Promoter Score, and uh, how do you how do you how do you know that you're on path? Do you kind of survey hiring managers and and candidates and applicants and kind of get to do you do you know where satisfaction and or you know uh, an NPS score kind of exist? Do you have an idea of what that looks like? So we don't have an NPS score directly relating to text recruit, but what I can tell you is is that of all of the messages that we've sent in the last year, you know, 23,800, less than 5%, less than 0.5% of our total people we've texted have opted out, uh, which I think goes to show you there, those are the only, so less than 0.5% of our population is saying, I don't want to receive text messages from you. Please stop texting me. And I think that, that, that proves the point that our applicant pool is wanting us across the entire recruiting, across the entire recruiting team um, to text us, to text gotcha. us. Gotcha. Uh, Danielle, uh, Daniela McDonald asks about your ATS. So why don't we, while we skip forward, uh, I know we wanted to talk about the tech stack a little bit. Um, what do you use and how does text recruit kind of interact with those technologies? Yeah. Um, so we use Taleo as our applicant tracking system, Smashfly as our, you know, candidate relationship management system, uh, and, and how those two integrate for us is so Smashfly sits on the front of Taleo and obviously anything pre-application uh, occurs within that system. So if we want to do a campaign to people, if we want to reach out to people because they may have joined our talent network but they didn't apply, um, you know, Text Recruit gives us the ability via their, uh, via their Chrome plugin to directly correspond with those candidates via one click and automatically screen grab their phone number and put it in the Text Recruit system or via an integration pass it across. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier today, we sent out a targeted, very specific uh, text blast to about 150 people in our talent network. And, and you know, the, the pace with those, those responses came in was just tremendous. How does it fit into our, um, you know, our, our ATS is a little bit different. So based upon step and status triggers, so if you say, hey, I'm going to move this person to inter hiring manager interview schedule, it will automatically key up a message on text recruit server 24 hours beforehand, before the interview to send that reminder text message saying, hey, in 24 hours, you need to show up at this location at this time. This is who you're interviewing with. And, and, you know, does this still work for you? Please text us back to confirm. And then that recruiter and that coordinator on the CW team will have that response and have that intelligence to really kind of, you know, make sure our candidates are showing up, one, on time, but at the right place. That's awesome. You know, along these lines, uh, Christopher Berkner is asking about how often are you texting with one candidate and do you have a kind of a maximum frequency? So now we're kind of digging into, okay, so you're texting. What is, you know, we understand standards, we get templates, like, but what does it look like between just recruiter and candidate? What does that look like? What's the cadence look like? Yeah, so uh, you do recruit, absolutely, recruiters text back and forth with candidates all the time and you know, uh, it could be, it, it depends upon the conversation. You could have a recruiter that's going back and forth with a candidate and there's literally seconds and it's just the amount of time that it takes the candidate to respond and then the recruiter could be conversing back and forth and, 
you know, during normal business hours, eight to five, that, that happens pretty commonly, right? The recruiter is saying, hey, when is a good time for me to call you? It got, I, I received your application. It looks great. I want to I want to have that initial recruiter screen. And rather than us, you know, picking up the phone or shooting that person an email, we may shoot them a text message because we know to us um, being that first person to get in touch with them when they're when they're hunting for a job is essential, right? Because they may be applying for you know uh, ten jobs, um, and I think you know that just earlier this month, April 2017's unemployment numbers came out, and it's the lowest it's ever been in 10 years. Um, and, and I think, again, speed to market is everything. Um, and, and for us, first call resolution, I'll take it from the, you know, kind of the customer service world, um, but being able to immediately get in touch with that person, have that important conversation, that initial screen, so you can decide whether you're going to move them forward or not in the process. Nice. So you mentioned uh, authentic voice, uh, I think two or three times. I want to ask, you know, a question: Have you, as it relates to authenticity, have you seen a recruiter maybe go too authentic, uh, and and or the other side of that? What's what's a great example of kind of CDW authenticity in action? So you know, I think um, we uh, we empower our recruiters to think about how. Uh, how would they, how, what, what do they think would be appropriate to converse with a recruiter, right? Our recruiters are communicating with candidates via, via email already today. So if they wouldn't put it in an email, right, then why would they put it in a text message? If they wouldn't say it over the phone, then why would they, why would they, why would they say it in a text message here? Um, you know, and I think, sure, is there things that, you know, you might say on your personal phone um, to a friend that's different than what you would say in the workplace? Certainly. But there is a time and place for that, and at work, we, you know, that's just something that we, you know, we have full faith in our recruiting team um, that they can use their best judgment. Okay, and and uh, Chris uh, Gibson asked a really good question as well. Is is this just between recruiter and candidate, or, or are we using this more internally with recruiter to recruiter, or candidate to hiring manager, hiring manager to recruiter, et cetera, et cetera. So is it, uh, is as you're using it currently, is it recruiter to candidate, candidate to recruiter? Yeah, we are just using text method, or text recruits for candidate communications today. Um, and so internally, we're using a whole host of communication collaboration tools to recruit uh, to candidate or to communicate between our recruiting team and also with hiring managers throughout our organization. Okay. And uh, so I need to go back to the candidate for just a second because I wanted to kind of get to noticing kind of that candidate change. So you've noticed it in your, your former employer and you also noticed it with CDW that they're more responsive via, via, via text. And you've said this a couple times to me, it's seconds matter, minutes matter. Um, have you noticed any other changes in the candidate, not just about texting, but have you noticed anything else with this group of people? Yeah, you know, I, I think that... Um, <laughs> In particular, when we talk about you know millennials and, and what it's doing, uh, what what technology is doing and how it's changing, everything happens on their phone today, right? Um, you know, you look at things like Snapchat and, and how it's really kind of changed um, changed communication between um, you know candidates. And, and one thing that we have seen is that if it can't happen on the phone, uh, a lot of the times, um, you know, uh, the, the next generation, the next workforce, the next population entering the workforce uh, just isn't as responsive as doing it, right? If it's not easy for them, if it's not interactive, if, it's, if they can't get a response quickly, um, that's just, that, that's a tremendous uh, thing that they want and desire. Um, Ryan uh, Davenport asked a great question. Do you send text to rejected candidates? Uh, and, you know, I guess there's a process for people you're moving along in the pipe, uh, but what do you do with folks that you, you know just aren't a fit or, or, you know, you want to give them some advice, et cetera? Like, how do you manage that experience and is text recruiting a part of that? Yeah, so I, I think uh, there's a couple different things. There's different reasons to reject people here, um, and we certainly see that within CDW, you know, you might be, uh, you know, uh, of course, we're, you know, we're not, we're not sending a message to reject you um, to candidates via text message. That sounds like a great way to end up on, you know, Twitter or Facebook or something. You say <laughs> screenshot. Um, you've got to think about that. Everything is so easy to just post online and the experience there. Uh, but you know, we are. Let's just say this case. 
you might not be a great fit for this position that you applied for, but you know what? Hey, I've got this other position. I think you'd potentially be a great fit for it. Go out and apply for it. Here's the link, right? Um, and, and I think there are different there there are ways uh, that you can use texting to you know, hey. Um, this would be a great position for you. Follow up our conversation today that we had over the phone or whatever it is. Um, you know, we want we want uh, we want our use of texting to be authentic, as I talked about earlier. Uh, and and that would be an instance where the text isn't pre-built. That's not a template. That is a recruiter who is you know kind of has that experience and is going out there customizing that text message to be able to send it out. Right. Um, Mike Bush asked uh, yet another great question about the value proposition. So if you go back to when you sold this kind of internally, uh, selling it internally and getting people uh, that may, maybe don't see your vision or see what you're seeing on the next wave of recruiting or how texting is, is that? Did you, had to, did you have to add a headcount? Did you, you know, like, did you, did you have to deal with the responses that were coming back? Uh, did you, did you dedicate resources? So now, what I love about this question is he's asking, okay, so you sold it internally. It's working. Did it fundamentally change your team? Is there anything different in the way that you sold it or advice that you'd give people when they have to sell it internally? So it's no different. I mean, you're already communicating with candidates. I can't stress that enough, right, via email. It's, it's purely taking some of those communications that may have either happened, had to happen via leaving the candidate a voicemail, right, and, and think about the time it takes for you to leave that voicemail, the time it takes to, to call the candidate if you're trying to call them back and forth and you miss each other four times. Um, you might have been emailing them already. So there is a direct take a trade-off there. Um, CW didn't have to add additional headcount to our organization to handle the volume from text messaging. Uh, it, it's just something that we, you know, um, we, we, that's not our, how we're using text messaging. It's not, um, and I think this is a key distinction for us. We are not going out there and sending, you know, 100,000, 100, 200,000 text messages at once. We are being very strategic about the population that we are targeting, and and geo and re really kind of from a geo uh, from a geographical perspective and their area of interest that's all in within our talent network. Um, and I think that is the difference for us. You know, we didn't want to get in a position where we were overwhelmed. Right. And we couldn't manage it. Right. Now that makes sense. So uh, before we get to Q and A, so first of all, everyone, if you're, you know, as you're listening, you got questions. Do like a lot of people have already done. Go ahead and chime uh, in on the Q and A part. Uh, but I have one more question before we get to kind of the open Q and A. Is um, and this is about competition. You know, have you seen anybody else? either that you directly uh, compete with or just people out there doing kind of good, solid text recruiting. Have you seen other examples that kind of inspire you and know whether or not they're competitive or not? It's not really the important part. It's just have you seen anybody else doing great work as it relates to text recruiting? Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it's hard to find those, to be honest and transparent with you. I think. You know, we definitely did some reference calls prior to uh, you know becoming uh, you know becoming a customer with with Text Recruit. Other TA managers did within our organization wanted to kind of you know test it out. But I, I will tell you, you know, it, it's kind of one of those hidden little things that it's not visible to other companies a lot of times, right? Um, you know, it's not like we're texting our competitors and saying, "Hey, come work for us," right? Uh, it's not like they're they're texting us. Um, we are generally one-on-one -on -one texting with people um, who are, you know, who've responded to a job advertisement to a position at CDW or joined our talent network. And so I, it's hard for me to visibly kind of say, hey, I've seen other, I've seen XYZ company doing it or I've seen um, this because there's just not a lot of, you know, it's not, it's not something easily viewable, right? You can't go stumble on a career marketing site of text messaging for a company. Um, it, it's just not gathered all in one place. Right. A um, couple, couple things real quick. Dana Brand asked the question, do you, do you find recruiters work later at home because it's convenient doing it from their phone? 
And I love this question because it, it deals with workflow. Again, you've already said, hey, you're already communicating. So maybe this is just an extension of that. But, uh, but do, do you find, because it's so easy on their phone, do you find that they're doing more of it kind of away from the desk, if you will? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely have heard, um, you know, stories about from recruiters on my team here at CDW. Oh, I was able to get, a, you know, a candidate text me back. I was able to text them back, you know, at, at 7 o'clock at night or something because they popped up on my phone. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think those things happen. We don't, um, we don't say, hey, you've got to respond to the candidate within two minutes or something like that here at CEW. Um, those aren't SLAs that we enforce in our, on our team from that perspective. Um, we do expect, though, um, that our team does uh, promptly respond as soon as possible, um, you know, uh, when they're in the office and when they're in front of it, right? We don't want to leave candidates out there hanging. Um, you know, I think one thing we've done here at CW to set our team up for success with working from home is, is really providing that ability to, um, and the technology for them to work from home. Um, so if they need to work remotely, if they have positions that they need to fill, sure, um, they will do that, right? Um, you know, I think we have an awesome team of recruiters here at CW and, um, you know, they will uh, they will cons consistently do what's necessary to meet our hiring obligations. Right, BD, BD Myers asked a really really cool question. Lots of good happening with this. What's what's what is problematic uh, or mistakes or lessons learned? So this is again you're with a bunch of your peers. Everything's great. However, you've probably had a couple hiccups along the way. Uh, one would assume. Uh, what are those, and how do we how do we get these folks to avoid those? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of our hiccups along the way have been happen have happened and we, uh, I think we figured them out by testing and I can't, um, you know, encourage you all, uh, when you're looking at integrations, when you're looking at potentially integrating it into your ATS, test, test lots, right? Um, you know, how are things like candidate names, com names coming across? And so one of the things, um, you know, with, with resumes auto parsing into ATSs, with resumes auto parsing into CRMs these days, um, candidate names come across sometimes in all caps. Or they might use a fancy font and they think that it looks, it looks awesome on their resume. But then they get an email or they get a text message from us that's in all caps. And they say, why are you yelling at me? Well, it's because you provided us your name in all caps. Or you provided us your name in, in all lowercase. And so one thing that we've done now is we've instilled some process where, you know, hey, if we're going to send out a mass email campaign or, you know, or whatever, or a mass text message campaign, whatever it is, our, our team is QCing that from experience, right? Um, because the last thing we want is uh, that candidate to get that message, that text message, and have it come up and say, Jared, in all capital letters, and then the rest of it's all regular um, because we use the mail merge. So I think that's a great example of, you know, you've got to test things, you've got to QC things before you do it. Awesome. And guys, I'm going to just jump back in really quick. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm not going to sing this time, but we do have a, a quick question on a poll that we're going to launch here. Um, so I'm going to just launch this quick little Poll question here, um, that's open. Uh, basically the question, you know, are you currently using text messaging, you know, in your recruiting efforts? So if um, people are going to answer, and while people are answering, I'm actually going to throw out another question that had come in. But um, why don't you guys just give me a couple, uh, whoever wants to take this, you guys, who, what are the do's and don'ts, basic do's and don'ts of text recruiting? And then after I get your uh, opinions on that, we'll go over uh, the poll here and see what kind of results we get. Who wants to take that? Basic do's and don'ts. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, do's and don'ts of text messaging. Uh, obviously, I think we've talked a lot here about authenticity, right? You want to you be original. Um, I think you want to be professional, right? Um, so if you if it's not appropriate, you wouldn't say it in email, you wouldn't say it over the phone, why are you saying it in text messaging? Um, and I think those two things are guiding principles for us here at CDW. Um, one thing is if we wouldn't say it to a candidate, like, you know, I think one, you know a great example is um, if it's not how we would say something to them over the phone or how we'd say it to them in an email, why are we saying it to them? You're limited by character count with text messaging. 
um, and, and you need to get straight to the point. Um, so, you know, uh, we, we call people, we call candidates, right? Um, we leave candidates voicemails from time to time. But rather than saying, hey, um, candidate X, um, I left you a voicemail. Let me know when it's a good time to call you. Let's just say, when is a good time to call you? I have some exciting news or whatever it is. Um, and, and, you know, I think thinking through your communication strategy from start to finish about how text messaging will fit in is an essential um, part for you, for you all as users. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. That was great. And um, I do have some results here back from the poll, and I'm a little surprised, but uh, here we go. 63% of people, no. No, I'm really surprised. 63% of people said no, they're not currently using any type of text messaging. Ooh, interesting. Oh, I'd like to hear about this. I think that is interesting, and I would, I, I would, I would ask those people who said no, how many people just don't know it's happening, or it could be happening in the background, a recruiter is using their personal phone or their work phone and doing it today, and it's just not reportable. There's no insight into it. And from a compliance standpoint for us, you know, having that recording, being able to show, hey, we reached out to this candidate on this day, having all of it tracked is essential. Yeah, that's, wow, I know, I'm just, I'm really surprised about that. Um, we only have just a couple more minutes here, it looks like, so we are, we need to wrap up soon, but a couple other questions real quick. Um, so give me just like a really great example of if you have a recruiter, they've never texted with a candidate, just, you know, what, what would be the best way to get started? You know, just kind of get their toes in the water, get started with texting a candidate. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think every, every candidate from us will receive a text message or a phone call or an email, um, you know, simply asking, hey, I, I received your application, it looks great, when's a good time to connect, right? Um, and, and that's the initial kind of communication that they're receiving right out of the gates after they complete an application, right? Um, and, and I think that's a great place to start. Um, you think about your time to get in touch with that candidate, um, you know, it might be minutes, you know, versus, uh, you know, email where, you know, you think about it. Um, how, how many times are you as a recruiter fighting for that precious space in the inbox? Um, you know, I, I get north of, you know, 100 emails a day and, you know, I get way fewer text messages and I am generally more, uh, you know, I'm, at, at the end of each day, my text message box is down to zero or single digits where my email box is you know, uh, is, is significant, right, uh, of unread messages for me to work on the next day, and it's a continuous task. Um, email is quickly becoming a crowded communication channel, and it's all about what can you do to, you know, get to the top. Text messaging is where we're at with that right now. Yeah. Awesome. I agree. I think a lot of people, even though 63% of people <laughs> didn't agree, I agree, and I think they'll get there eventually. And like you said, I mean, you don't really know who's doing what or who's actually saying that they're doing it, but I think we're slowly going to, that gap's going to close eventually, and we're going to get a lot more people on the, on the texting end of recruiting coming up. Um, geez, I can't believe it. Wow, two minutes left. So I guess just with this last minute, um, I, I do want to take the time to really to thank you, Jared. You were awesome today. Tim Cup, you were great. This was amazing. I learned a lot. Um, I want to remind everybody, you're going to get something in your inbox after this ends shortly. Um, so to direct you towards Text Recruit, we want you to check out a demo. It's pretty awesome. You've heard about all the different awesome things. You've seen us tweeting about it this entire time. So please go check it out. We're going to send you a little reminder. Um, and as far as other reminders go, we're going to get you the recording. It'll be up and running within 24 hours. So if you're afraid you missed anything today, don't worry. We're going to get it to you. Um, and please go check out our website as well if there's any other uh, interesting questions, things you might have about recording, um, or not recording, recruitingdaily.com is our website. Uh, we're recording this webinar. Tinkup, is there anything else you would like to end on uh, for the lovely no. people? 
there? No, this was a wonderful use of time. I want to thank Jared, obviously, for dropping a bunch of knowledge, but I also want to thank the audience for asking really great questions. There is a ton of questions we didn't get to, so we're going to talk with Jared and talk with the good folks at Text Recruit and figure out how we can get those questions answered and get, to, get them back to you. So just thanks from the bottom of my heart. Thanks to Jared, and thanks for the audience for just doing a great job asking wonderful questions. You all made this hour of our time really, really, really well done. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Anything else from you before we head out? No, thank you, everybody, for okay. participating today. Great questions. Uh, yeah, awesome. Everybody, thanks for joining in today, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.